mentioned the cash you had, you said on Friday, something like 500 million, you intended yeah. to put some of that into the campaign. Now that the bond's been reduced, are you going to start putting money into your campaign? Yeah. You haven't done that since yeah. 2016. Well, first of all, it's none of your business, I mean, frankly. But uh, I might. I might do that. I have the option. But if I have to spend 500 million on a bond, I wouldn't have that option. I'd have to start selling things. I don't have to sell anything. I'll be spending money on my campaign. I might spend a lot of money on my campaign, but I should have that option. A crooked judge shouldn't say, we're going to have you post a bond and take all of that money that I could be spending on a campaign or other things if I want to do other things. We want to bring in CNN's Kristen Holmes uh, to fact check that because, Kristen, when Trump first made that claim on social media last week, saying that he had enough money to cover at the time the 460 plus million dollar bond, his attorneys quickly came back and tried to clarify that saying he, he's not exactly that liquid, right? Yeah, look, he, he actually is liquid enough for the $175 million. As far as we can tell from every assessment we've seen of his finances, all the records that he's had, uh, he is roughly 300 to $400 million, but that, a lot of that is still not completely liquid, uh, but it would likely cover this $175 million. The other part of this is the underwriters who said that they would only qualify, they would only underwrite a bond for $100 million, a lot of that because of precedent. People did not have or had never underwritten a bond that was half a billion dollars. That is an enormous amount. Uh, what I want to specify here and point out, one of the things we've been talking about, about this New York civil fraud case for the last several months, has been how critical this is and how much this really plays to who Donald Trump is. The reason he's been there is because it goes to his identity, his core, his brand. You have never heard him be so personal, so angry, and so public about that until today. Today, over and over and over again, saying that he was rich enough, that he built a great company. One day, someone report how great his company is, saying he had so much cash on hand, how good his brand was, several times saying how many different properties he had, you'd, how in New York he had built up an entire a conglomerate. He is defending what he believes is the core of his identity and being. It is what he ran on in 2016. It is what uh, helped propel him to the White House, this idea that he was this billionaire, this wealthy businessman. And you heard him tripling down on that today. That is the kind of stuff when we are reporting that he is privately angry, that he has been ranting about this. What you saw today was that. He just upset by the fact that people were talking about uh, that he wasn't wealthy enough, that he couldn't pay that $464 million bond. And just to remind you, uh, not only, as you said, did he come out and say, actually, I do have the cash, then his lawyers had to say, no, he doesn't. This is an impossible amount. No one is that liquid. But it was almost as though he could not stand the fact that people were saying that he didn't have that cash. Now, the other part of today. He is clearly very angry that this trial is going forward. You heard him saying that he doesn't even know if there's going to be a trial. There is no indication that there's not going to be a trial. And I'll tell you from talking to his team, they thought the trial was going to start today. They were surprised and pleasantly so that it was delayed even as far back as to April 15th. They are planning an entire campaign around the fact that he is likely to be in court, meaning he's going to have campaigns events on Wednesday and Saturdays. Those are the days he's out of court. But talking about that campaign, whether or not he's going to actually give money to his campaign, you heard somebody ask the question there. You keep saying you want to give that money to the campaign. Well, now that the bond is lower, will you give money to your campaign? First, he said yes. Then he said it's none of your business. Reminder, he has not given any money to his campaign right. since 2016. We had no indication he's going to. And he had no indication from other people outside of his campaign. Remember, he's been spending the last several weeks fundraising to get money for his campaign because they've had some issues with their finances, because they have come in significantly lower than President Joe Biden. So the idea that somehow this is complicating things or making it impossible for him to finance his own campaign seems comical at best or a falsehood, uh, just given the fact that we're, we had no indication that he's going to, and even now, he didn't answer the question sincerely and straightforward whether or not he would. Right. All right, Kristen, stay with us. Let's go back out to Caitlin Collins. Caitlin, just going off of what Kristen was explaining there, he was asked how he's going to pay for this now reduced bond. And he talked, he was asked if he would take foreign money. He said no, but then he talked about how some banks are outside of the U.S. and maybe you use those banks. Uh, but and, and again, it just like hits at the heart as you hear him talk over and over again that he can't stand the idea that he doesn't have the money 
or wouldn't have the money to pay for this. What more do we know about how he will pay for this bond and these claims that now he's going to contribute to his campaign? Yeah, uh, until about three hours ago, I mean, they were kind of searching for every single solution because as of this morning, they had not yet found a way to make that half a billion dollar bond to be able to put that up. Then uh, a state appeals court, of course, here in New York, came in and lowered that and also gave him 10 additional days to carry through with that. His attorney had been asked previously, the attorney who argued and lost the, the civil judgment, the civil fraud case, whether or not he would turn to a foreign government potentially to help pay for that. She would not answer, instead saying that it was a privilege, that was privileged information. But we have Kara Scannell and Paula Reed back with me. And Kara, you actually were talking to an attorney recently, another Trump attorney, about this very issue, which I should note, Trump, Trump said he didn't think he would need to here. But he did say that he did believe he would be allowed to turn to a foreign government if they offered to help cover not only his melting legal fees, but, but when it comes to putting up this bond specifically. What did the attorney tell you? Right, so this was a different attorney, Chris Keist, who was directly involved in this case. And this was after there was confusion about whether Trump would accept any foreign money. And on Friday, he told me on the record, he said categorically it's not true. He said no money from a foreign government, not Russia, not China, is under consideration, nor has it ever been under consideration. So he was very d stark there saying that they are not considering foreign money. Now, if Trump talking about a foreign bank is a different thing, unless it's a state-owned bank, because there are a number right. of foreign banks, and, and that's a different situation but they were pretty determinative on Friday that he was not going to look toward any foreign money and you know he does have cash still Trump still does have cash and the issue with the bond is that these insurers were only willing to accept as collateral cash or stock and so Trump now could get a bond or get two bonds because some had said that they had internal limits of not giving a bond more than a hundred million dollars so he could get two bonds and now post that with cash because he does have the cash to satisfy that that is what his lawyer said was the biggest obstacle that they faced in putting together a half a billion dollars was that he didn't have the cash to get companies comfortable with taking it. And that was really the issue for him. So the appeals court now saying you only have to come up with $175 million. He has that so he can satisfy this bond. And, and the, right before he left, Paula, he said that he would try to appeal the ruling from the judge today, that this trial yeah. will start on April 15th. What's the likelihood of a pretrial appeal ruling working? Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. There's no real factual basis for him to prevail on that appeal, but it's still his right to try. And as we've seen with their strategy, they will try any avenue, any possibility to delay. And I'll point out that we thought for certain that this trial was going to start today on March 25th, and it has not because, of course, the Justice Department handed over uh, this additional evidence. So right now, April 15th is the date, but anything can and will happen in Trump legal world. Yeah, no, the judge seemed very steadfast on that April 15th date for us. And Jessica, obviously, you heard a lot of that reaction from the former president there. It was really just anger at the fact that the judge is moving ahead with that date and did not grant any more of a delay to this case starting here on April 15th. Yeah, no question. Some of that anger also coming from the fact that these cases cut to the core of his identity uh, as a business person. Uh, let's bring in Daniel Dale, because, Daniel, you were listening as the former president was answering questions from reporters. And part of what stood out to you was his repeated attack on Judge Arthur Engeron and, and the specific mention that Letitia James, the, the attorney general in New York, is somehow controlling him and that he, he's undervaluing Trump properties. Uh, walk us through a fact check of, of what he said about the judge. Well, he kept calling the judge crooked and corrupt. And I think we're so used to Donald Trump calling lots of people crooked, you know, crooked Hillary, crooked Joe, that it's sort of faded into the background as standard political rhetoric. But here, you know, he's on national television making a specific allegation of corruption against uh, a, a more obscure figure, certainly not a national political candidate, calling a judge corrupt with precisely zero evidence. He's presented not a shred of anything to corroborate this claim that this is a crooked or corrupt judge. It seems like he's unhappy with the judge's rulings and therefore, in his mind, he's corrupt. But there's there's nothing there. So I think that's important to say. And then he again continued to say that these are all Biden trials. All of my trials are Biden trials. There is no evidence even that Joe Biden had any role in bringing the two federal prosecutions that were brought by special counsel Jack Smith, let alone the two prosecutions brought by local district attorneys over whom the president has zero jurisdiction. So in all four of these cases, there is no factual basis to call these Biden trials. Of course, he said it before and he'll keep saying it. 
Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Daniel. And, and just to remind everyone, Judge Ingerwan at one point saying over the last several months, there's enough evidence in this case to fill this courtroom.